Welcome to Local Heroes here on WKFK DTV7, where we interview veterans of the military and we bring you their stories, unedited and unchanged. So don't go away, we'll be right back with a very interesting story from one of our local veterans. Hello and welcome to Local Heroes here on WKFK TV 7 coming to you from the GI Museum in Gautier, Mississippi. We have a first. It is an absolute honor for me to have the first female veteran on Local Heroes and that would be Miss Irma Dorfin. And she was an Army nurse in World War II. Irma, we're going to get this started by asking you, how did you decide that you were going to go into the military? Well, I had friends in the military, and they were waiting for me at Camp Claiborne. And they kept calling and writing and saying, if you don't hurry, we're going to leave you. I was working in Orange, Texas. So as soon as I could, I went and I met them. I joined. And but you were already a nurse. I was a to. nurse. Oh, yes. We all were registered nurses when we went in. And yes. when did you become a registered nurse? Uh, in June of 1942. Wow. So you see, I didn't go in until July the 7th of 43. And, and the first place you went to train was? Claiborne. Camp, Camp Claiborne. And it rained the whole time we were there, but we marched and we did the infiltration course on our bellies under live ammunition. That was exciting. And uh, by... Um, the 12th of August, we were on our way to New York. New York. What were you, uh, you like living in tents out in the field? In no, Camp no, 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 we had barracks. Claiborne was a big uh, camp. There was a lot of maneuvering going around on those uh, hills or those plains. And um, we, uh, we had a hospital, there was a big hospital there. And we were about to go on duty in the hospitals and that's when all of a sudden our orders came through and we were moving we didn't know, but we were going to New York. They put us on a train that must have been a square wheel train that was taken <laughs> out of mothballs or something. A little but, rough? Yes, it was rough. No air conditioning, of course. But uh, it was so slow that we missed our ship. So we went, in, we went to Camp Shanks in New York and stayed there about 10 days. And then we went on to Fort Devens, Mass., and uh, stayed there until October. So from August until October, we just marched and um, did calisthenics, and that was when they let us go home once. Told us to leave, go 50 miles away, and we went to Texas and Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> and you exceeded the radius on your pass. A little you? bit, but we were back on time. We were not AWOL. <laughs> so. well, you must not have got that square wheel train on the way back. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a nice trip. It was uncomfortable, but it was well worth it because we wanted to see our family one more time, and we did. And you got back up there, and uh, what happened after that? When well, you got back on by October the 13th, we finally had a ship, so we got on the uh, Martania in Boston, and they sent us on overseas. It took us about 10 days to get to Liverpool, England. And uh, that was an interesting trip because us, we, we, did, we zigzagged, <clears throat> but we weren't on an escort because our ship was so fast. We didn't have, uh, is that what I, am I saying it right, an escort? Uh, we you didn't have an escort. We didn't have an escort. The ship could outrun the escort. That's right, that's right. But um, the zigzagging meant that you were going this, this way for way so many miles, way. that way for so yeah. many miles, and that way for so yeah. many miles. And, um, a submarine did get after us because we did a quick turn. Some of the nurses remembered falling, rolling along the floor. And uh, we looked out the next morning. We were passing the Azores Islands. And uh, then we went on to Liverpool. So you didn't know the submarine was after you when it... It was during the night. We didn't know. We turned fast, but... Uh, well, I was going to ask you if you got scared, but if you didn't no, know... No, we weren't. didn't know what was happening. No, no, no. Not until, I don't know when, we finally found out. You get off the ship in Liverpool. Mm -hmm. this, it's a big culture shock, isn't it? It was a culture, sh culture shock, yes. Uh, but, you know, they were playing, uh, there was a band playing some of the American Army tunes. The Red Cross was there. We had our donuts and coffee. 
So we were well greeted. But we got on this train, and that was a culture shock. You know, the door, doors just moved back, and we just stepped in, and it was different. So we rode on down. We went down to Taunton, England, and got on buses, or trains. I mean, uh, uh, probably GI trucks. GI trucks, yeah. And went about eight miles to a little Bishop's Lydia, and there was our hospital. What was so funny, there were several hospital units who had gone there before, and the commanding officer would look it over and he'd say, my, my people don't want to be here. It's too much out in the woods or out in the hills or something. And we didn't know any better. We went there and we enjoyed it. So how, what it were your nice. living conditions like when you were there? Uh, very good. You saw the pictures of the buildings that we were in. We were a little bit crowded at times. But uh, the living conditions were fine, and we ate well. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Good mess. A lot of Brussels sprouts <laughs> uh, growing out in the yard in front of our barracks. So, and we had, uh, that's where we had our 45 Nissan huts, and um, a lot of hepatitis patients. And I can't explain why, but we also had patients come, casualties come from Italy. So, um, those were injured, but I just know more about the hepatitis because we stayed on the hepatitis patient. I mean, in wards. And the the, so, the, the Nissen hut was kind of like a what may people may know as a Quonset hut. It was a kind of Quonset, a rounded. Quonset, it almost looked yeah. like a drain pipe cut in half. Right, right, right. With a little door and a window on either yeah. end. But they were comfortable. Were they cold the, in the in the winter not time? Not too cold. We had these old. Um, Cold stores right in the middle, um, the what have you. The little stoves. Stoves, but um, yeah, they were comfortable. We were well dressed. The army saw to it that we were well dressed, and also our patients. We had sheets and blankets, and it's amazing that they were able to get all these things. It was it was an it was an interesting thing, but you know the army provided so well for us. Maybe because our hospital was so large. And we did come from Texas, incidentally. I wanted you to know that we originated at John Seeley in Texas, Galveston, Texas. And most of the doctors, many of the doctors were from John Seeley. Many of the nurses were from there. But then after a while, they had to spread out and get us from any place that we were available. While you were in England, did you ever get to go in town or in, interact with the locals? Yes, yes. Some of our, patients, our uh, nurses went to London. I went to Turkey and Land's End, and uh, it was just um, the, at the tip of England. It was sort of like the Miami of England. And uh, uh, where else did I go? I didn't, I didn't take too many vacations there. Because we were there, what, from uh, May until, from November until May of 44. And then uh, they were preparing for D-Day, and we could tell. So we went to, we had a tent city then. We went to near Stonehenge, and again, we started marching and what have you, and everything was very restricted by then, of course. So how could you tell they were? Preparing for D-Day because of all the activities. All the activities, the uh, the gliders over over uh, overhead. I can remember so many gliders were going over, and uh, you know they said if if we got any more GIs there from America, we were going to sink England. There were so many of them there. <laughs> yeah, all the GIs and all the material that were in England yeah. were yeah. in danger of sinking the island. <laughs> yes. You were in England when D-Day actually took place. Yeah, we were waiting on the um, uh, Southampton. Was it Southampton? You were, yeah. That was a port in Southampton. Yeah. You were mm -hmm. waiting there at the port. We were waiting for D-Day, yeah. And did you see or hear any of the activities that were taking place? <laughs> no, just a lot of planes going over. And of course, we knew then. Well, we knew because we were glued to the radio, and Eisenhower makes an announcement. We'll do it today. This is it. Oh, really? Yeah, he put it off. It seems to me he put it off one day because of yes. the weather, and then yes. then they went on. How did you feel when you heard that? You knew well, where you were going. We knew where we were going, too, but uh, I don't think we realized how 
how drastic or how traumatic it was going to be. It was, it was just one of those things. You just took it one day at a time. We were young, we were never frightened, but uh, we were just going overseas. We were going over to France. So D-Day happens, and you get on a ship? Yep, July the 31st, we got on the ship from India, an Indian ship. Uh, we actually had tablecloths and white tablecloths and napkins in the dining room. Can you imagine? No, I can't. Yeah, from the shores of uh, England to France. That's, and we were fed real good, good food, well cooked. And then we got there and we went over the side of the ship and got on the Higgins boat. Then it changed. The first night we went into a bombed out church because uh, someone decided it wasn't safe for the nurses to be out in the tent city. So we spent the night there. And then the next day, they took us down maybe about 10 miles from St. Maragliese. St. Maragliese. St. Maragliese. And uh, we stayed out in, the, um, out in the fields there about maybe 10, 10 days, something like that. Intense. Intense. Yes, yes, and yes. No tablecloths and napkins. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> That's did you have a mess hall or were you eating like sea rations or K rations? Oh, no, we had a mess hall. You did? Yes. Yes, you know, I told you, they provided for us, yeah. for big hospitals, because they were able to. We weren't up that close to the front. So you were a big hospital, but you were in tents in these we big, were in tents in the fields because, in France. Yeah, but we were in transit. I mean, we were just moving on. Our hospital supplies had been sent ahead of us. So it was, it, it took somebody real smart to get everybody moving that way, I think. How often That's did you move? Was it every Well, we opened week three, or so? three hospitals. So we moved from the one in Taunton, Bishop's Lydia, and our supplies. See, that's why we had 250 GIs. They moved everything for us. And uh, after I mean, after we crossed the channel, we went to Rennes. That was our th second hospital, Rennes, France. Beautiful building. And then uh, we stayed there only four months and went on to Nancy. We're going to have to take a short break right here, Irma. Okay. But we're going to come right back with more of this interesting story, a first for local heroes. Don't go away. We'll come right back. Welcome back to Local Heroes here on WKFK TV 7. This is a first for Local Heroes. We're interviewing an Army nurse from World War II, Mrs. Irma Dorfin. She's a lieutenant. And Irma, we were talking before the break about what, about moving a general hospital. Gives people a sense of the thousands of items that had to be packed up and moved. Well, we can start with the wards because we had beds, we had linen, we had medicine. We had records that had to be moved. Uh, everything was moved out, chairs, desks, uh, you name it. It, was, it moved out, and we had men, GIs, 250 of them, who were helping us, and we had the big trucks. I used to remember what they were called, but we did have the big trucks that Deuce were and loaded. Half, two and a half ton trucks. Two and a half ton trucks, okay. They were loaded, and they were... Set, we never knew where because we were way back of them. They always went ahead of us. And uh, of course, then after that, we had, uh, we had the maintenance department that had to be moved also. And we had our Jeeps and uh, vehicles that had to be taken care of. And uh, in the nurses' uh, quarters, we moved our own things because I'm not sure, I don't think those beds were moved. But uh, that was quite an undertaking. Um, let's see, we had, um, well, we had all so many wards, like I said, we had a ward, we had 45 of them. So all 45 had to be vacated and moved up to wherever we were going. And they would have to put these on hold someplace because we were going over to France and nobody knew exactly where we were going to end up. So someplace along the way, they were just sitting and waiting for D-Day. 
it just took a lot of people and a lot of work to move a general hospital. Because we sometimes had, well, we had over a thousand in our, in our, um, our capacity. More than a thousand after we got to France, but in England, I don't think we ever had more than a thousand patients. Of course, our mess hall had to be moved. All of our cooking utensils. And you can imagine, I don't think we moved any stoves when we were in England. But when we were at the tents in, um, um, after we got to Utah Beach, all of that stuff had to be moved too. The cooking and the, the things that we washed our... The emergency our, heaters. Yes, yes, yes garbage those cans. heaters, everything. It just took a lot of people working together and well organized. We had some we had some good people working with us. We had a, ch a colonel who uh, uh, he he was amazing. Everything he ever t each time he would he would say the question is, and of course we knew something big was coming after that. But if he would leave for too long, we knew something was happening. He was going to get new orders for us. Mm. But I believe that's about, that just about tells, what else did we move during all this time? Oh, besides you've, you've everything. Just everything. Yeah, the chapel. Of course, we had a chapel that was set up, and uh, they, had, they had a lot of things. We had benches that had to be moved. So it was almost like a small city. Yes, it was like a small city being moved, yes, yes, yes. Now, you talked about the food being good in England and the food being good on the ship. How was the food in the general hospital once you got overseas into France? It was okay. It was Ooh. good. There were a few times we had to eat K-rations, but not, not that often. We were always well-fed. I guess it's because we were far enough back from the front lines. And I don't think, you know, we were just hungry, hard-working people, and we were not picky. We were just so happy to have food. Now, going over on the ship, we had to eat two meals a day, and that was a little different because we had to be in a hurry, and uh, uh, the food was not so good. I think we had English chefs, but uh, anyway, we ate. We, were, we came back healthy, so I guess it was sufficient. <laughs> Yes. But, yes. 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 But you were you were taking care of about a thousand patients in these hospitals. In England, a thousand. But by the time we got to France, we it was bigger. We would get up to about, I would say, at least two thousand. And sometimes, yeah, and they were just come in bunches, and we would do what we could. We'd uh, uh, keep them. We also had a ward of POWs, which. Uh, uh, they did not let the nurses go in there. We had uh, medical men who would go in and help them. But I was recovering from an appendectomy when we were in Wren, and they, they would put that type of nurse who had to sit and do nothing but records. And uh, I just sat at the, but we had a guard at the front door entrance to the ward. But, you know, these POWs didn't want to hurt anybody. They didn't want to go escape and try to go back. They were, but I guess we just had to be sure. A lot of security had to. So you had an to. appendectomy while you were overseas? Yep. Yep. So you got a, you got a firsthand <laughs> while experience at the care the hospital gives. Absolutely. While everybody was working 16 hours a day, I was recuperating and in those days they thought you had to stay in bed for about 10 days which was awful because wow. now they know better i yeah. was going to ask what your how long you worked i, I guess it depends on the patient load but it's average about 16 hours a day at times when we first got to Wren, yeah yep 16 hours 12 hours 16 hours very seldom less than 12 after we got over to france in England, it wasn't quite as rushed. Eight hours was about what we did. And we, I worked, I must have worked about two months night duty because we had nothing else to do when we first got there. And several other nurses just volunteered for night duty. How did, uh, 
How did you feel about the patient care? Was it rewarding? Did you feel like you were contributing? Uh, I think so. I think so. They, uh, you know, we would go around and we would talk to them, and that was the most important thing. They wanted to talk to somebody. And in those days, we would go and we would, uh, like with the hepatitis patients, they had to have special foods at night. So, and uh, it was always a good thing because they were so appreciative. And uh, the, the patient care, I think, was terrific. I really do. And I think the, most of the men, well, we couldn't neglect them. No, no. No, uh -uh. and I don't believe a nurse I don't think any nurses would have neglected those men that came back. No, indeed. I think the most, the saddest thing, and I'm jumping way ahead, but was when the <coughs> war was over and our POWs came, our POWs, Americans, and they would have to stay in our hospital two or three days to sort of uh, refurbish, uh, stabilize them, but they didn't want to stay. They wanted to be on their way home. But they were so, so sad looking. And you've seen pictures of them, you know, how they were treated. Yes. Yep. Not well. Not well at all. But you had to evaluate them. You had to see if they had any illnesses that y'all had to take care of. That yeah, because that they were due a long trip across, and they weren't flying them home. They were putting them on ships. So we had to be sure that they were going to be able to make it. Now, in so about December of 44, uh, the Germans... Uh, had an operation in the Ardennes that started what was called the Battle of the Bulge. Where were you when that happened in Europe? Where we were, were in Rennes, France, because see, we, <coughs> we, went to, we got to Rennes in, uh, in August and opened up our hospital. And we were there until January the 1st, 45. So the Battle of the Bulge had just started. This is when my brother came to see me. Oh, you, your brother came <coughs> to see you while you were overseas? While I was overseas, we went to Mont Saint Michel, and uh, the Battle of the Bulge started soon after that because he uh, left and went to Metz, and he was wounded in Metz. But uh, he made it back, went to Marseille, was in the ATC, so he got home before I did. <laughs> but yes. did, did you all know that the Battle of the Bulge was taking place? Yeah, yeah. We didn't know how bad it was. We just knew something was happening. It was a very, it very was, close, a very, very close costly battle. So, mm -hmm. did y'all have a lot of casualties come into your, yes, your yes. That's hospital? When we had, that's when we would have sometimes, oh, I told you I'd read about 900 patients in about 10 days. They just came, came in fast. And you were doing more than 16 hours a day sometimes. No, I don't think so. I think we had enough nurses. We're 16, maybe some of them in the operating room, 18. But with the patient, 16 was about what we most of us did. I can't remember ever doing more than that. That's got to be pretty exhausting to work that many hours a day. Seven maybe days our a week. adrenaline was running high because I don't believe any nurses really got that exhausted. I mean, 16 hours a day, then you'd go home and you'd get your rest and you'd come back and uh, we had nothing else to worry about. I mean, you know, it was just the hospital, back home and rest and then back again. Uh, we, what was home like? I know it home, wasn't back home, but what was home like for you? Home was a building in Wren. It was a building that the nuns had occupied and uh, our rooms were comfortable. To get down to a shower, it was cold, and we had to walk through a, a, a huge kitchen, and uh, that was bad. But anyway, we 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 did it, and the first um, for the first month maybe that we were there, maybe not quite. We were not allowed to leave because of the snipers were still around, so we were escorted from our house or from our building, and this was in the middle of the big city, to the big hospital about a, a block away. So you had to have so a GI escort with a weapon to make sure nothing happened to you. I guess he had a weapon. I don't even remember, <laughs> but we're not. We didn't walk by ourselves. So, yep. So your living conditions were okay. Yeah. Yes, they were okay. I can't. And even in the tents, we're all, uh, we were. It was cold. It was cold in July. Can you imagine in England? Oh yes. 
it was real cold. But anyway, we were, maybe we were young enough where nothing bothered us that much. But you were so very patriotic and you felt like you were there doing your part. For we the had a duty and we did it. I mean, you know, we had something to do. We wanted to get it over with. <laughs> yeah. But we knew that we had a responsibility. I mean, these boys were out there and they were really, they were going through it. They were paying the price. They were paying the price, absolutely. But y'all were there for them. That's why we were there. That's why we had joined. Irma, we're right here at the end of the show, but can mm -hmm. we bring you back for another one and get more of your story? Yeah. Okay. Yes, so, someday. Don't miss the next Local Heroes where we'll hear more from Miss Irma Dorfman, Lieutenant, Army Nurse Corps, World War II. Join us then. Thank you for watching this edition of Local Heroes here on WKFK DTV7. Go to our website at WKFK.com and click on the links and follow those links to archive stories about veterans. And join us again next week at this same time for another Local Heroes here on WKFK DTV7.